how many years was that in between? So, so literally, um, I was an organizer from two, from 1996 uh -huh. to 2006. Uh -huh. And in 2006, I ran for office and lost. I started working for Barack Obama in 2007 and he got, he won the South Carolina primary where I was the political director of the primary campaign. And then he continued to run for president and I quit the campaign. I still wanted him to be president, but I was more passionate about serving in South Carolina. So in 2008, I ran for the state legislature again. I got elected. I served one term till 2010. And then while Barack, Barack Obama was president in 2010, his team reached out and says, hey, we want you to come help us to implement the Affordable Care Act. Would you accept a presidential appointment? And yes. I accept the appointment and the rest is history. Absolutely. So this is, you know, I, I want you to repeat that because, okay, folks, if you, if you, if you watch the podcast, there's just some things that at some point you have to see the pattern. Okay. It's, it's every single conversation we have. You went through a lot. There's no avoiding this. You went through a lot. And you were at the point where you wanted to give up. There's no avoiding this. We all get there. This is the point where it's in your hands as to where your, your destiny is. Okay. You can give up or you can do what he did. What's the one word I always say? Make a decision. Mm -hmm. I love that you said it. You said it twice. Mm -hmm. I made a decision. None of this happens. None of it ever. It will never happen if you don't make a decision. This is just what it is. It doesn't matter how hard it gets. It's up to you. You're the only one who can do anything about it, and you have to make a choice to do something about it. Once you make that decision, then the path ahead of you will open up. You'll see the steps that you need to make, the choice that you need to make, what you need to do to get out of the situation that you're currently in. Yes, you need support. Yes, you need the people to help you, but you need to help you too. You need to believe in you. This is, but I just had to, it's like, I keep hearing the same story coming out of everybody else's mouth. Like everyone who's been successful is saying, I got to this low point and, and people don't know that. And I want to emphasize it because a lot of times they'll see you, they'll look at you. Oh, look how amazing you are. You're so lucky. Oh man, you're lucky that Obama picked you. You're lucky. And, and people say that. And I talk to people who have accomplished things and people say that about them. You're lucky, whatever it is. And it's like, no, 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 no. You just, I'm just not showing you the Instagram pictures. I'm not just showing you videos of when I'm at my lowest, when I'm mm -hmm. dealing with the hard stuff. You don't see it, but it's there. So. Yeah, I, I will tell you, man, a lot of people, um, you know, we live in a world where Instagram is the edited version of our lives. I mean, that's what everybody sees is the, as the edited version of the life. Um, but it's the, it's the unedited footage or the stuff that we leave on the cutting room floor is what makes us who we are. I mean, like, I, I'm, I'm real clear that, you know, adversity is not what you go through, it's what you grow through. And I've grown through a whole lot. And I got more failures than I can count. I mean, like, I, I say this all the time, I'm, I don't lose. I, I win and I learn. I don't fail. You either win or you learn. And that's the context of, of where it is. And I can tell you that I have spent more time learning than I have winning. And again, I didn't lose. I spent more time learning than I have been winning. And the main point is when you go and take chances, you will learn a whole lot. And that's what actually prepares you for success is the failures and the challenges that you, that you go through every day. And, and I've had more than my fair share of them. And I have them every day. And so the, the point is, we just got to make a decision to keep getting up and to keep taking action. Absolutely. And I know, I know that you have a hard stop because you, you're a busy man. But um, just, just really quickly, you know, sponsored or co-sponsored 204 pieces of legislation. You know, even coming up, named by Peter Dreyer as, as, as one of the 50 young progressive activists who are changing America. I mean, this is this is this amazing stuff. You know, yeah. did you ever think coming up in Portsmouth that you would end up being a politician, you know, working with President Obama in the in the state legislature, you know, just all these different things. 
No, not at all, man. Uh, you know, coming from where I, I come from, man, I grew up on a um, in a neighborhood in Norfolk called Ingleside um, on Scott Street. And there is no way, shape or form that I would have imagined that some 40 years later that not only would I have worked for a president, but I've met five presidents and I've been connected to the administration and that I've traveled the world. I've been to Israel and South Africa, and I've been to Europe all as a, as a keynote speaker, speaking at conferences on stages in front of, you know, 18,000 people, you know, there, there's <laughs> no way I could have imagined this life, but I'm grateful for the opportunities. It's been remarkable. And um, it's something that I don't uh, take it all lightly. And I know that I'm not done yet. And that's why, you know, I spent the better part of the last, you know, seven years helping leaders and organizations build diverse, high performing teams in a world class culture, because I'm teaching people to be the leaders like the ones that invested in me, like David Coriel, like Myron Terry, like Lenora Reese. If you lead like that for your team, you will have a monumental impact that will outlive your life. And that's my whole focus now is to focus on my legacy. Thank you.